On today's Fit to Eat, I'll be preparing grilled pork chop with radish and Brussels sprout salad topped with a granola cinnamon mayo. Registered dietitian Rebecca Turner has some helpful information about the different types of olive oil, and my guest is the program lead for the culinary arts program at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, Chef Todd Riley. It's going to be a really great show. Welcome to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Today, my guest is the program lead for the culinary arts program at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, Chef Todd Riley. How are you, sir? Man, it's good to see you up good here. Good to see you. Absolutely. You know, I, uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun today, and it's going to be a neat way to really talk a lot about the benefits of the college, you know? And, and there's so many people who have no idea. They really don't, you know? I agree. So talk to me a little bit about how you got into cooking, because I think we, I, we've talked about this, but there, there's a funny story here. I really got into cooking because I don't like to do dishes. So when I was about seven years old, my mother made us eat around the table every day, 5.30, no questions asked, and she cooked every night, and there was three kids, and every third night we'd have to do dishes. So. I didn't like doing that anymore, so I made a deal with her that if I learned how to cook and took that night off of her, she would do my dishes. And it just so you, you traded dishes for cooking? Correct, and it just kind of grew from there. I, by the time I was 10, I was cooking four and five nights a week. So. See, you're luckier than me. You know, I, I used to cook, but mm -hmm. I still had to clean. I don't, you know, I do that at home now. I don't know how that works, you know? It's kind of like... Shoot, I, I think if you cook, you shouldn't have to do the dishes, you know? That's, that's why I'm a chef today, for that very rule. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there's some great stuff we're going to talk about. Honestly, you know, we kid around, but there's some really neat programs you guys have. There's some great accolades that you guys have had. But let's talk for a second about what we're going to cook. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some beautiful lean pork chops. We're going to make up a salt-free seasoning. We're going to grill them. Then we're going to probably come back and do some incredible stuff with Brussels sprouts and radishes, which are so indigenous to where we are, you know? Very underserved. Most people shy uh, away without even tasting them. Man, so and done I, right, love, I love radishes. You know, they've got their own little spiciness. We're going to add a little bacon into that and have some fun with that. And then we're going to actually show kind of a fat-free... I, I called it a cinnamon granola mayonnaise, and mm -hmm. anybody who's probably watching any of the promo <laughs> is like, he's making mayonnaise? Is that healthy? But this is a healthy mayonnaise. I mean, it's a mayonnaise type, you yep. know? And I know you actually do it yourself. We, we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. So let's do this first. I'm gonna take some onion powder, totally salt-free, garlic powder, a little bit of rice flour, so this is a gluten-free dish. Okay black pepper, and some ground Italian seasoning. And if, if you would, just go ahead and mix that up. And then I'm gonna kinda organize and do a little cleanup here on aisle five and try and get us going. So, you know, I think the thing that I have to start off with, mm -hmm. because you need to be proud about it, and, <laughs> and you're kind of a bashful guy at times, is the fact that the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College Culinary Program just won the best culinary award in the state. Not, did. Is that, is that correct? Talk a yes, little sir. bit about that. Uh, there was an independent ranking that came out um, about six months ago, ranking all the culinary programs in the state of Mississippi. And believe it or not, we have uh, 12 or 13 of them. So there's quite a few. Yeah. Almost every community college in the state has one, and we've got even a four-year university at the W that has one. Um, and we were number one of all of those. Yeah. And so. Yeah, and you know what? The facility is so amazing. People have no idea. They have no yes. idea until they go in there that you've got, you got the pastry kitchen, you've got the real kitchen, you've got the auditorium. I mm. mean, my gosh, the facility, I think, is <laughs> phenomenal. No, I mean that. I really do. I went to a culinary program when I was coming up that was um, about $70,000 a year, and we have a far superior facility than they did. 
at a tenth of the cost. So it I, is it is unmatched when it comes to price to, to quality of, of, of facility and quality of instruction. So. That's fantastic. All right, so here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to let you hold the chops. All, right. All I'm going to do is just kind of season them, we'll turn them, and then do them on both sides a little bit. Figure only one of us needs to get our hands dirty at this point, huh? <laughs> And it really, it really is a neat way to do this because there's absolutely no salt. Mm -hmm. So I've taken the liberty of getting this pan really hot. We're going to take and put about a half of a teaspoon in there, move it around, and then I'll let you go ahead because okay. You're the, you're, you're the, no, I'll, I'll get it. I, I can, if you want me to, I'll can. take over. Oh, no, trust me, before we're done today, <laughs> I'm going to have you work in a pan. And then listen, hey gang, nobody expects you to remember all the ingredients that we have in here today. So go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join the MPB Facebook page and you'll be able to find all of these recipes. So let's talk a little bit more about the college mm -hmm. and the variety of programs because okay. there's a huge diversity you guys have that people don't know. Currently under the hospitality structure we have a two-year associates in culinary arts, we have a two-year associate in baking and pastry arts, which is the only one in the state of Mississippi and really the only one in the region. And can I interject there? Yes. My wife is in that program. Yes, she is. My wife is a retired nurse. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. nursing program you do down the road. Mm -hmm. But yes, I mean, I do. I, so it's kind of neat. I mean, I, I have, <laughs> I, I really have a great, my heart is in this. She's about halfway through and doing extremely well. So, <laughs> Hey, you heard that out there? That's a plug to my <laughs> wife. <laughs> um, also, we have a hotel restaurant management program. And then we have a um, banquet and catering program, which is a smaller kind of subsect of the culinary program that focuses more on volume cooking. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? So, I mean, you know, I think that it's really underestimated in two ways. The facility itself is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of events there, you know. I mean, the, the fact that you've got the event center and so much going on mm -hmm. that you can have in, I mean, I think the fact of the kitchen and the fact that your students actually get to cook real time. Talk a little bit yep. about that. Uh, the way the facility works, it was a joint effort to one, offset the cost of the culinary program, which is a very expensive program. Food is not cheap, especially when you have 300 plus students and you're buying food for them. Um, but the front of the house of the facility is designed to be rented out to the public. So it's a banquet space. So we have weddings there and we have conventions there and we have award ceremonies and anything, you name it. We also have a restaurant that is open to the public Monday through Friday. From the, the city to, diner, huh? The city line cafe, correct. City line cafe, yeah. I'm sorry. And that's where the students kind of move out of the classroom and more into a real world setting. It's kind of a transition between what they're going to learn in a classroom setting to what they're actually going to experience when they go out and get a job. So we take the concepts not quite as busy as a normal restaurant, which is good because it's still a training facility. So, <laughs> right. But they you start making You don't want food. to bury them and then have them just get discouraged <laughs> yeah. that I can't do this. Correct. You know? So it's kind of that go between, between you know, they've got three hours to make one meal in a, in a, um, in a school setting to they have 10 minutes to do that same thing in a restaurant. It's kind of the go between between the two. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think the hardest thing, you know, I've done a huge amount of training in the, all the restaurants I've worked. The hardest part is to get somebody who's been in the academic world to realize a huge focus has to be on speed. Yes. You know, that, that's, that's hard, man. There's really no easy way about it. I'm going to go ahead and turn these guys. Yeah, along those lines, one of the things we encourage at the program, and one of really what I think is one of the reasons why we're rated so high, is that we encourage our students not to get a job after they graduate, but to get a job the day they start. Um, there's, we'll teach a concept for 20 minutes or an hour, one day in a two-year span. If that's all they ever do, they're, they're going to be completely worthless when they get out. Yeah. So we need them to go to industry and start practicing on a daily basis everything that we teach them there. Yeah. So we're just giving them a foundation and a, and a backing that will help pr promote them in the industry much faster. Yeah, and you know what? I think that the, the great part about it, too, is you're down on the Gulf Coast where there mm -hmm. are a multitude of, I mean, there's a huge variety of restaurants there's between just, the casinos, mm -hmm. the, the private sector, you know, kind of like my restaurant group. So I look at it as there, there is a chance for anybody to find something they can do as long as they have some self-initiative, you know, and they want to yep. get out there and do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other thing, and we're going to talk a whole lot more about health, I know that there's some direction that the college is going to go mm -hmm. trying to kind of team together in that aspect. 
And it's something that's been very important to me in all my restaurants because people come in and, man, that's what they want today. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got probably, what, half the people who want fried seafood <laughs> and then half the people who are really focused on trying to find something healthier, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that's really important to say. And I tell you what, I think our pork chop, man, that looks pretty good, huh? It looks pretty good to me, yeah. It really does. We're going to keep that going. And I tell you, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way it's coming out. It's going to be a great, nice, healthy piece. And you get to try it when we're done. <laughs> and right now, we're going to take a short break and go to our registered dietitian, Rebecca Turner. She's got some helpful information about the different types of olive oil you can use. We'll be right back. You might have heard that olive oil is beneficial to your health and it should be a staple in your kitchen cabinet. And it's true. When you combine it with a balanced diet, olive oil can help prevent heart disease and even enhance your health of your hair and your skin. However, not many of us are aware of the different kinds of olive oil available and which type should be used for cooking or topical use. It's important to know about the different types of olive oil and what they should be used for. So let's look at a few of the most common kinds. First, let's start with extra virgin olive oil. This is the most expensive and the highest quality type of olive oil. It's unrefined and it's very rich in antioxidants, minerals, and vitamins. Use extra virgin olive oil for salad dressings, drizzling over the finish of your dishes and sauteing, but not so much for cooking. Now virgin olive oil or regular olive oil is like extra virgin olive oil, but it's sturdier for cooking. It's best using in recipes and baking. It's still not suitable for deep frying though. Refined olive oil is cheaper than virgin olive oil, but it's inferior in terms of vitamins and nutrients and even lacks some of the taste and flavor. But it's still suitable for cooking and baking if you choose to. Now, pure olive oil can really sort of throw you for a loop because of the word pure. But pure olive oil is a blend of extra virgin and refined olive oil. Overall, though, it's poor nutritional value. Use this for your scalp, your hair, or your skin. Understanding how to get the most out of your olive oil will make sure your meals are fit to eat. All right, welcome back. All right, now is when I really <laughs> put you to work. How about that? I'm going I'm to do the first phase. Again, just a very small amount of canola oil. All right, now, now, we're, now we're hitting it. Okay, radishes. And I tell you what, you know, a lot of people don't know, but Long Beach is like the radish capital of the world. Now you see, all right, all right, gang, wait. Oh, we gotta get a, that, all right. The first person ever, ever, maybe, no second person, but first person who actually flipped food on the show. Okay, <laughs> little garlic, I'll throw in there for you and I'll let you just go ahead. How about some right. onion for you? And then a little bit of diced red bell pepper. I love that, you know what I like this too? It's so colorful and yet totally it's gonna have such great flavor. And I tell you what, people don't, they really don't realize how hot we got that pan, huh? I was just, I mean, that, too hot. <laughs> that, that's, that's the key to me to being able to sear in flavors. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the college. Okay. What, what do you want, where do you want to go on that? I just, it's kind of right along the lines of what we're doing here today, but um, we're really starting to try to refocus ourselves on the health movement in the country. And the South, and especially Mississippi, is not necessarily known for that. So we're trying to pioneer that down there. Um, we've talked about adding a dietary nutrition program, which is you would think of typically on the nursing side or on the medical side, but we're actually going to house it in with the culinary students. And so it'll be in addition to that. But we're taking a culinary background and a dietitian background and merging them into one. So no kidding. not only is it healthy cooking, but it's really tasty very high-end healthy cooking. So. And they, they, they know the details on the food, Correct. obviously, yes. at that point, you know? They can All take right. recipes that you're used to that probably aren't that healthy and give you some better cooking techniques to make it healthy and substitute different things in. So you're eating the same food that you've always been used to, but you're actually eating it healthy instead of what your doctor tells you not right. to eat anymore. Right, right. All right, let's go this way with a little crushed red pepper just to give it a little pizzazz. All right. Little black pepper. And then... I have already taken the liberty of cooking crisp and drying some bacon. All right. And you know, a little pork in there where obviously kind of fits in with the rest of the theme mm -hmm. of this meal. 
And there's nothing wrong with having, you know, everybody thinks of bacon and fat is, is, is a bad thing, but there's nothing wrong with it a little in moderation. And always when you're trying to eat healthy, throw in a little something that tastes good. It keeps your palate yeah. wanting more, and it keeps you coming back to get more and more. Well, and that, that's kind of the goal, guys, with Fit to Eat. We want to make sure that people get the enjoyment factor of eating the healthy food so that they stay motivated to do it, you know? Mm. It's hard, man. That part's it's hard. hard. It's it's hard to get started, but once you once you get into it, once you try to retrain your palate, and once you get away from those comfort foods that you've always been eating, and you start figuring out ways to substitute and ways to, to move forward with the same food you've always eaten, just make it healthy, it, it really isn't that difficult. It's no, very easy. it's not. I do it all the time. All right, let's, I got I have to tell a story about Brussels sprouts. All right. As a child, mm -hmm. I hated them. <laughs> it was my, my, I mean, absolute food. You could not pay me to eat. I would try to hide it and give it to my <laughs> dogs, and they'd spit them out. And my mother would catch me and eat your Brussels sprouts. And you know, what I realize now, and this is what I love to talk about on Fit to Eat, is that if you don't overcook veggies, mm -hmm. and they still keep their beautiful color, they actually taste better. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I think, I mean, would you agree or? Oh, no, I agree. Uh, Brussels sprouts are one of those that have got a natural acetylic acid, and it, it's very bitter on the palate. And so if you cook it and, like, put a lid on and force it back in, it just keeps that bitterness. But if you cook it slow or quickly and at high heat and you leave it to open air, that it'll escape, and they're, they're much nicer. And, and I tell you what, the radishes have their own natural spiciness. Yeah, nice peppery You know, so that's them. kind of the idea. This is going to be kind of a spicy vegetable salad, if you would. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess the way I look at it, I love, like, warm salads. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in Italy. They do, you know, like, olives and artichokes and mushrooms and sun-dried tomatoes, you know. my language. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that Mediterranean style, I could live on it forever. Mm -hmm. But it's such a different feeling when you actually have kind of a warm salad. So, you know, the fact that we're calling it a salad, it's almost as, it's almost as deceiving as us with the next course, which we're talking about a cinnamon <laughs> granola mayo, because there's no mayonnaise, <laughs> you know. But I wanted, you know, we were talking about that. We'll talk about that, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the last segment. But, you know, the, the main thing to me is you got to find a way to say, okay, I'm not going to eat this. I'll eat this and make it healthy. Yep. You know, and uh, it sounds like the direction that the college has had has been exactly in that kind of yes. format. We've been actually, not just with the culinary program, but we've actually partnered with the nurses. And so the nurses come through and do a four module program to where when they're in their nutrition and their, their dietary classes, they're actually coming into the culinary program and cooking the food they talk about in class. That's fantastic, so, yep. you know. That yep. really is. Okay, so again, gang, to get all the ingredients and the recipes, let's go into MPB Facebook, join it, or go to MPB Online slash, I'm sorry, MPBOnline.org slash fit to eat. What we're gonna do on this, Todd, is mm -hmm. turn the heat off now, and then when we come back, we're gonna add in some applesauce and some Dijon some, mustard. Yeah, some Dijon mustard, right. so it doesn't all kind of break down and it should be delicious. So we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we'll finish this dish and we'll toss together the granola cinnamon mayo. So come right back. Today I have an excellent snack to share, healthy deviled eggs. And there's nothing devilish about eggs. Whether you take them scrambled, over easy, boiled, or in an omelet, you're eating a protein-rich powerhouse. You know, proteins, they're the building blocks for your body. They help you grow, build muscle, and store energy. Your body needs protein. And luckily, many foods provide this powerful nutrient, but eggs get a gold star for its high quality protein. So today, we're going to take advantage of this wholesome food and make a healthier version of the deviled egg. We're gonna get started by having a grown-up boil you four large eggs. So then you just pop the egg yolks, that's the yellow part, into a bowl and set the white part back on the plate. Now here's where your healthy swap comes in. Instead of using mayonnaise, we're gonna use two tablespoons of low-fat Greek yogurt. 
Next, we're gonna use a little bit of chili powder, salt and pepper to give it a good flavor. And one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. This is really gonna give your eggs a tang. Now use a fork over a spoon to better mash up your egg yolks until all of the spices in the Greek yogurt are well mixed together. Now once you have it all smooth, you're gonna pick back up your egg whites and you can use your fork or your spoon and put your mixture back in. Now to finish, you're just gonna garnish with a little bit of paprika, which gives it a nice flavor and a pop of color. And you're gonna keep doing this until you finish all four eggs and then pop them in the refrigerator until they're cool and cold and you want one. I tell you what, it's great to have somebody with me who actually can flip a skillet, you know. They've heard my story repeatedly about what you have to do to learn it. They don't want to hear it anymore. So anyhow, all right, so I'm going to give you the last ingredients because we've kind of got the heat down on low on this. Okay. Apple sauce. Nice little sweetness added to the, the Brussels. And yeah, the and, it, and it's, it's, this is all, that, that was 100% natural. I'm going to give you that for the Dijon mustard. And then you may have to stir that in. And I'll throw in this beautiful chopped parsley. And another okay. nice little tip with the applesauce, if you want to take out a lot more of the refined sugar, just take an apple, put it in the food processor, and just that's, there's no added sugar, no preservatives, no anything. That's cool. You know, I've never done that. Mm -hmm. I really, I really haven't. Okay, I tell you what, yeah, if you mix that up, what I'm going to do on this side is get ready with our, our mayo that's not mayo, all right? <laughs> so we're being deceiving today. This is fat-free Greek yogurt. I'm going to put it in the bowl. We're going to add in some cinnamon to kind of go with the granola, a pinch of nutmeg just to give it that kind of kick. Nutmeg's one of those where you don't need a lot. It goes No, I tell you what, way. man, and people, people mess up on that <laughs> all the time. And then you just have nutmeg everywhere. And I've got some chopped parsley. Start stirring that together. And we're going to put a little touch of balsamic vinegar, believe it or not. Oh, I love balsamic. Oh, I love adding it in. And, and trying to come up with something a little different. It looks like this worked out just perfect. And then the very last ingredient, and guys, this is something you want to do when you're ready to eat it. Because if you put the granola in there too early, it'll get soggy and chewy and it's just horrible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And, they, and a lot of people don't realize that. And then they wonder, what is that in there that yeah. is just, but it adds such a nice crunch. Yeah, All right, ahead. so let's see. Well, you help me go ahead. Let's go ahead and, and put a little bit of the, right. the salad on your plate. And I tell you what, you are coming along really well here. I've got two little portion sides for us. And uh, yeah, it's really kind of unique having an actual chef with me because usually I'm trying to teach a politician how to cook. <laughs> I think that's an oxymoron. All right, I'm gonna grab the pork chop. I, I did not say that. And I don't mean that personally against anybody <laughs> that's been on the show. I'll probably get some negative feedback about that. How about some sauce for yours? Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the veggies on mine. And I tell you what, it's time. All right, All right. I, know, I know you're a tough judge, but you gotta go ahead and try that. <laughs> All right. So this is one of my absolute favorite dishes. It looks amazing. Thank you. Try a little pork chop with the sauce first. I love Brussels sprouts, man. I've gotten to where I absolutely adore them and mm -hmm. I hated them when I was young, you know? Isn't it amazing the difference when they're cooked right? It is. I've actually got a four-year-old son. He, he loves Brussels sprouts. And, really? Oh, I introduced him to all kind of food early and started him. If they're too young to know that they don't like it, they don't ever grow up <laughs> having misconceptions about food. You know, I think it's one of the most important things is to somehow get your family involved in the eating process, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it's never been an easy thing for anybody, anyone out there, you know, trying to get their families used to eating healthy. And there's so many fast food places. And, you know, I just think it makes it really difficult, you know? So if you can get your children started, and, you know, we talked about the college, we've got just a short amount of time, but what what is, what is the, the direction you see our youth heading towards in the college, real quick? Um, 
one of our driving goals is, especially on the coast of Mississippi, we've got a ton of industry. Um, the casinos are one of our major employers down there. Um, but over the last 15, 20 years, all of their higher ups, their executive chefs, their sous chefs, everybody in the higher ups in the F&B are all from out of the state of Mississippi. We just didn't have enough trained people down here to, to staff those positions. Right. And we want to start the groundwork there at the community college and start putting out people that will eventually take over those positions so that we have people in higher up positions that are training the, the, the future that were actually from Mississippi and trained in Mississippi. So. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I know that that was a big part of the direction in our House and Senate mm -hmm. in getting the funding to do the Culinary Center, and you know? Five years later, that's, that's still our mission. So. Yeah, unbelievable, huh? Yeah, I tell you what. All right, so what's your thoughts? It's actually beautifully balanced. Um, the pork chop, even though there's no salt, it's very, very tasty. Thank um, you. And the salad got a nice spice kick to it, and then you get the sweetness and the coolness of, of the, the mayonnaise yogurt. It, uh, it balances amazingly. Awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. It's, it's appreciated coming from a, full, you know, <laughs> from, from a chef as well, and I look at it as this was one of the most fun meals we've done. I've never had a better person to cook with, <laughs> well, you know, you. and I mean that from my heart. So, you know, the way I look at it, I want to thank you, Chef Todd Riley. Thank you. And this is an absolute example of fit to eat at its best. So I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Eat well.